PBS just finished showing a brilliant reimagining of Sherlock Holmes as a kind of 21st century misfit savant with no social skills and a sidekick who is a doctor who suffered wounds and post-traumatic stress disorder while serving in Afghanistan. But even this pitch-perfect Sherlock, played by an actor with the pitch-perfect name of Benedict Cumberbatch, still has the dream enemy, the all-encompassing evildoer, the man of whom it can be said, everything is his fault and he planned it that way. Moriarty. But it was in the George C. Scott, Joanne Woodward version of Holmes, a movie they called They Might Be Giants, in which the concept of Moriarty was revealed for what it probably really is. In that interpretation, Moriarty was a figment of Holmes's paranoia. He was necessary to explain a largely random world with which Holmes could not cope because he was psychotic. 1984 had its darker version, a kind of Moriarty created by the state so everybody had someone to fear, someone to blame, someone to help keep paranoia alive. He was named Goldstein. And now in our number two story, televangelist Glenn Beck has found his Moriarty and his Goldstein, his paranoid heart's desire, his man pulling all the strings, George Soros. Only Mr. Beck does not understand that the term pulling all the strings is meant metaphorically. Hello, America. There are a few working parts to a, uh, a puppet show. There is the, uh, the puppet master, here, there's the stage, there's the audience, there are the strings. And then there's the puppet stage manager who's supposed to tell you not to stand behind the freaking puppets or the audience is going to think one of them is talking to you. George Soros got rid of all of the corporate money through McCain-Feingold, which then allowed all the 501c3s to come in, this one might help, and this one might help, and this one might help. Mm, he's talking to the puppets. He's playing with puppets. Oh, the government needs to spend more money to stimulate the economy. No, no, we need more government intervention. Those evil rich people won't spend their money. We need more taxes, all of that. You know this storyline. This went on for two hours during which the George Soros puppets were identified as ACORN, the AFL-CIO, the Apollo Alliance, the Department of Energy, the Center for American Progress, Arianna Huffington, Color of Change, Andy Stern, the Ella Baker Center, Jim Wallace, Media Matters for America, Eli Pariser, the EPA, John Kerry, MoveOn.org, National Public Radio, La Raza, Rich Trumka, the SEIU, Sojourner, Senator Feingold, Open Society Foundation, Van Jones, the Tides Foundation, People for the American Way, the SDS, John McCain, Barack Obama, MSNBC, Woodrow Wilson, Britney Spears, Charlie Sheen, Oingo Boingo, Banana Republic, Huey Lewis in the News, ESPN, and the Chubb Group. Okay, all the ones after MSNBC I made up. Then again, all the ones before MSNBC he made up. Now, apart from the paranoid psychosis at play here, I would like to ask Mr. Beck to quit working my side of the street and to remind him that we brought puppets to cable news. So we close with the first edition of Soros Puppets Glenn Beck Left Out Puppet Theater. And just one final answer to Mr. Beck about puppets from this voice of the puppet master. You do know about the former president who was under the complete control of the British, right? Damn, those Ruskies have done it again. What's the matter, Mr. President? It's those damn commies that come up with another word. Okay. Well, should news people donate to political campaigns or not? Next.